and welcome to our last lecture, which will be about reading and writing to files. So this is considered in a way kind of an advanced Python concept, but it's basically letting you get a hands-on experience with real life applications and this time to um, your computer files. So let's get to it. Many people, or should I say programmers, find that reading from a file can be very useful. For example, let's take Google. Google, I'm sure, reads from a lot of websites, and you can consider the websites as files. And then you know when you're searching for a keyword. So Google goes through all of the files that it has, and then it kind of sorts it based on that keyword. And how does it do that? Because it reads content from those websites, which we, in our case, we consider it as files. The same thing here, when you are coding in Python, you sometimes want to find a specific thing in your computer files, so it's better to read from it. And here's a general line of code to read from files. But before I get into that, there is a downside of reading from files, and that is sometimes you may forget to close those files after reading them, so they can take a lot of your computer resources without even you noticing that. So, as a result, at first your computer will be working fine, but in the long term, your computer is going to start slowing down. You'll experience some um, problems with your software. That's because a lot of resources are being eaten up by that file, which is still open. I mean, even if you shut down your computer, that file is still open. So, here's the keyword with. With, what it does here is that it opens a file, but at the same time, once you're done using that file, it just closes it for you. Because, you know, we're human and we can sometimes forget that. So, with open, open here is a function. So, saying open a file, a file name. So, this is a string. It doesn't necessarily have to be file name. It can be the name of the actual file you're searching for. In R. R here is a string that the computer understands that R means read. So remember, R is not just a regular string, it means read. So open the file by reading through it as words. So you are storing whatever is being read into this variable. It doesn't have to be words, it can be also something else. It's just a catch a name or phrase to use. And after basically this line, you can do whatever you want with that file. So you can use um, slicing, you can search the words, you can try to sort these words. I mean, you can basically do multiple things with the file you are reading from. And it's basically your choice. You can search online for some practice exercises, but this is just a general format of how you read from the file. There are other ways you can open a read, but I prefer to use it with width because um, it closes the file for you, so I find that better to explain. There's a, another thing where you can actually write to a file. So it's a copy-paste of the previous line we saw, except that our string here, instead of R, it's W. So W means write. But there are two differences. W, our first difference is W, and then the second difference is that when you are writing to a file, basically all of your information in that file is lost. That means you are typing from scratch. So whatever thing you are adding to that file is basically new and everything that was in this file just suddenly disappears. So that's a downside about Python. I am not 100% sure if you, there's a way to recover back that information, but you can try searching online. But to the best of my knowledge, as I understand, when you're writing to a file, it just, all the information there disappears when you were just writing from the beginning. So these are the two most important um, things you can do with files. You can read from them and you can write to the files. And these are some advanced programming topics, but I'm just giving you a very um, general understanding of what they are. Alright. Um, thank you so much for going through this course. This course was meant to be a fast learning course. It's not
not like the um, other courses where it will take a much, much longer time for you to understand Python. I try to explain everything in detail, but in a very general way, so at least you can have it, an understanding you can start programming smoothly. And the, the way I explain this course is to kind of give you those um, sport wheels in a training bicycle for you to actually train on yourself by doing other exercises. And stay tuned for a, another course, the next course that might be coming soon, which will talk about some computer science concepts instead of programming. So I hope you enjoyed the course. Please don't forget to put down reviews. And I hope you gained a lot of information from this. And the most important thing is please practice. Thank you so much, guys.